variation. Black was playing e6 and entombing the bishop, which consequently led to various problems in development later. So therefore, another idea is simply bishop g4, hitting the knight, the natural defender of d4. Now, in the past people have played bishop e2, but my move, and the move that is the latest trend, d takes c5. Now at this point, black's got the choice. It's exchanging queens, going for the ending, a pawn down, or simply recapturing. Let's look at queen takes c5. Now this gives us a chance to show why it's not a good idea to bring a queen out early, because we can force it back and gain time by attacking it. For example, knight a3. Now, if black responds normally, for example, knight c6, but knight b5 is a bit of a hassle. Look at that, knight c7 with checkmate is, is on the horizon. Therefore, black routinely plays a6 to stop the knight encroaching on the queen's side position. This gives white the opportunity to start harassing that queen. This should be free, natural and good. The queen has to go back, queen c7, and then white continues in aggressive fashion, h3, kick that bishop. Now, if bishop takes knight, then simply queen takes, preparing to castle queenside, gives white the advantage of the two bishops, and, more importantly, black is still suffering from retarded development. The bishop retreats to h5, and now queen a4 check. Yet another piece being developed. Now, it looks a bit odd. Why not b5 and chase away the queen? Let's try it. b5. However, bishop takes b5 check. Solves that dilemma straight away. After a takes b5, White can take on a8. Queen takes a8 with a clear advantage for white. Knight bd7 to block the check. Of course, if queen c6, then thump out bishop b5 on the board and that's the end of the game. OK, so why not just castle queenside now? And to sum up in this position, white's got all his pieces just about on the board. The king, the hapless king, is still in the middle over here. White has a very nice position here. For example, one of the ideas is to play g4, push that bishop back a little bit, and maybe why not bring this bishop into the game and, and once again chase that, that wretched queen which has got no place to hide. Basically, white's just plainly better here. After d takes c5, black can enter the ending, but this time it's not going to be a dull, monotonous affair because White's got this extra pawn, and to get it back, Black's got to play very energetically and very accurately. Those combination is not so easy. For example, e5. Looks obvious, attacking the pawn. b4, Morris would defend it. Now in this case, Larry Christensen, the top American player, played knight c6, relying on active pieces as compensation. But a pawn's a pawn. The game continued. King c2, knight d5, bishop b5. Suddenly, it's black who's got to defend his pawn. f6. And now, a sneaky but nice move. King b2. Now, what's the idea of that? Well, the point is, is that if a5, white can just play a3 without worrying about the trick of a takes b4. And the loose rook being a problem. So you can simply even take back this way, a takes, because this rook is now defended. To give you an idea of, of what sort of position can come out of this opening, let's follow a few more moves. Bishop e7, bishop e3, just developing, no props. Bishop takes f3, g takes f3. OK, so we've compromised our pawn structure slightly, but the fact is he's given up a bishop and he's no nearer getting back his pawn a5, and, wait for it, a3, of course. Black castle's queenside. Rook g1, well, he still hasn't got his pawn back. 
g6, king c2, a little shuffle. But the point is, where's black's counterplay? The answer, nowhere. f5. OK, let's take this knight off the board. Bishop takes c6. B takes c6. And now, instead of bishop g5 as played in the game, Christensen himself recommends c4. After knight takes e3, check, f takes e3, he has to admit that white is better. So it's back to a drawing board for Larry. Now we're going to look at this line in a slightly more detail. Of course it's a pain to have to learn the exact moves, but in this case it's probably necessary. Just bear with me. e5, once again attacking that pawn. OK, well, let's defend. Now e4. Now before you start panicking, thinking you lost a piece, there is a way out of this. It's been played by numerous players. In fact, white can, comes out rather considerably better. The key move is h3. Because, of course, if the knight is taken on f3 by the pawn, then we can play h takes g4 and get our piece back. Simple as that. After knight takes g4, the jury is still out on the best way for white to respond because, basically, the emphasis is that white's already better. However, it'd be a bit mean to leave him alert here, so I suggest king e1, simply defending f2. Now, black doesn't want white to take on f3, so continue the pattern, f takes g2. Bishop takes g2. And the point is why this line isn't really liked by black. This swooping bishop along the diagonal, not pleasant. Knight c6 is uh, an attempt at sort of hanging on, and... Um, I think we can sum up even here because white's got the two bishops, a few open files. Admittedly, black's got the pawn back. But these pawns on the queen side are rather quick. b5, c6 is coming. White's better. Bishop h5 is for consistent move, keeping the pin. And also, it's been played by John Nunn, so it must be good. g4, breaking that pin once again. And now, if black meekly retreats, the knight moves. And black's in, got big problems here. So, knight takes g4, fight fire with fire. We accept the sacrifice, h takes g4, bishop takes. And now, the key move, knight bd2, stay calm. e takes f3. Let's have a look at this position, because this is critical. We've got a king in the centre, but on the other hand, our pawns on c5 and b4, stop black really developing quickly. White can continue his position, for example, with bishop d3. And now, that releases for this rook to come out to e1. So it's not all plain sailing for black. For example, knight c6, rook e1 check. And now bishop e7 preserves the right of black to castle, so it makes sense. And for example, now the French GM, Relange, against Nunn, play king c2, merely putting his king to safety. There's no rush. Nunn responded with a6. He's probably fine about b5 at some point. Bishop e4. Makes sense. Rook c8. But let's give him another headache. a4. Once again, a typical feature of these endings. A4 threatening B5 and at C pawn rushing to victory and promotion. In the game, Nunn had a good long think of his point and played H5, setting up his own pass pawn. Now at this point, Relance admitted he went wrong, but he does recommend a much improved line from his actual move, which is Bishop A3. He now recommends Knight C4, activating his pieces once more. And um, he rightly believes that white's better. After king f8, for example. Why king f8? Well, let's try h4. What happens next? Well, all sorts of grisly moves are available here. But one of the best is knight d6. Check. Hitting the king and rook. Black has to take it. But at this point, white can unleash a rather strong move. Bishop takes c6. Check. And not only check, it's double check, so the king has to move. Check from rookie one, and of course, bishop on c6. So, for example, king f8, 
and when that bishop rampages a little bit more, bishop takes b7, not only hitting the rook, but now the bishop's on pre. So the rook attacks the bishop, and it goes on its merry way, taking another pawn. I think black's best move here would be um, to leave the building as soon as possible. King f8 to get rid of a pin on the e-file seems obligatory. Now in this position, Ray Lawrence just says it's good for white with the idea of b5. And I must admit, it looks quite right, but there's also other ideas here. Now I'd particularly like bishop f4, because you never know, that h-pawn does look like it's um, steaming through, but if in doubt, even if it does get to its desired square, we can just block it. No need to worry. It looks good, but it doesn't do anything. What I like about this position is that with a bishop on f4, this idea of knight d6 has even stronger presence. For example, here, when black has obliged to take, we've got bishop takes d6 check, the king hides in the corner, and b5, and that pawns are rolling. In this peculiar case, it, there's no point counting the pawns. The reason is, it's because this rook here is not in the game, because the king can't move to f8 because of the bishops, and even h7 is blocked. So really it's stuck in this little corner. Whereas on the queen's side, the two white bishops work as a pair and dominate everything. Um, with b7 under pressure and four pawns against two on the queen's side, it's my bet that it's white who will promote first. And remember, that each pawn's not really going anywhere. This is Grandmaster Damien Lemos here for OnlineChessLessons.net. First of all, I hope you enjoyed um, this video. If you would like to receive more free chess videos from us, you can just click the subscribe button below. I would also highly recommend signing up for my free mail course the 10 Grandmaster Secrets to Dominate Chess. During this exclusive course from OnlineChessLessons.net, I'll share with you my own Grandmaster shortcuts to effective attacking, defending, and growth hacks to improving your chess without um, complicated books or memorization. So sign up by clicking the sidebar on the right and I know you won't be disappointed. Once more, this is Damien uh, for OnlineChessLessons.net and I'll see you um, in my videos. Thank you.